All the reasons we go sound possible when we go, my name is Taffer16 and welcome back to another episode of Reading Your Comments, episode 214 and special Monday edition and special probably longer edition because we did not have one last week. There are 46 comments featured in this episode, so let's go ahead and get to it. No, we'll quit on April 1st. You know what's funny? My April Fool's joke this year is that there was no April Fool's joke. Ta-da! This will make you laugh in the newer series of Tenable. They don't go home empty-handed. They each get their own Tenable tea towel. <laughs> that reminds me of, like, they, they used to have a lot in older shows, too, didn't they? Like, Bullseye, you get the Bullseye Collector Cup. So it made them feel like, you know, they didn't just get nothing. You know, it's like, hey, here's a, a cup <laughs> and, your, and your stuffed bully and all that. It's fun to see that's still around. <laughs> Warwick turns up in Jonathan Creek eventually. Nudge, nudge, more Jonathan Creek, please. I actually have a plan for Jonathan Creek. Let me, here's the thing. I, I can't tell you when, but here's what I can tell you. Let me look at um, how many before I'm, uh, let me just get to what I'm saying. So, I've done one episode, uh, the pilot. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more episodes before their Christmas, before their first Christmas special. Sometime in between now and the beginning of, or excuse me, sometime in between now and the end of November, I'm going to do all ten of those episodes. I can't tell you how, I can't tell you in which bulk, and I can't tell you when, but it's gonna happen, and then we'll do Black Canary in December. When Boo did the Shaggy impression on Tenable, I got genuinely embarrassed for him. Uh, I do love the show, though. I just watch about any quiz show, but it's definitely one of my favorites. I mean, it takes a lot of confidence to do that Shaggy impression, you know? I wouldn't, but <laughs> I respect him for it. I think I'm right by saying that, that Morris's character in I'm Alan Partridge was the most normal portrayal of a character for Chris Morris ever. Most normal that I've seen. To be honest, it's probably the only normal portrayal of a character I've ever seen him do. Downloading the video is the best way. This is referring to Daily Motion, and yeah, some people have told me that they get ads now on the embedded media player. It seems to be, depending on the person, some people still don't get ads, some people have gotten a lot more recently. Uh, there are websites you can use. Just look up Daily Motion Downloader to download uh, videos off Daily Motion. Honestly, that's probably your best bet. Watership Alan introduces Alan's attraction to Thai Lady Boys, but it is not mentioned again. Not mentioned out loud, at least. You know it's still going on in his mind. Basically, contestants who fail to audition for the chase get moved to Tipping Point. Not a bad consolation prize, but uh, granted, I would rather be on the chase. The UK used to have Jeopardy in the 80s and 90s, but it hasn't been revived since until last month when ITV announced that Stephen Fry will be uh, hosting a revived version of Sodom. Really? Okay. I, I forget what was going on with Stephen Fry. Was he sick or something because like he I, I know he kind of I, I, I there was something something going on I don't remember what entirely it was or was there a controversy I, I swear somebody told me there was something going on with him as for the reason he left QI and uh, was off TV a little bit nothing that I can find hmm I, I don't know I'm not entirely sure but good to see he's in good health no way you should react to Hardy Bucks. It's an Irish series, kind of like Bob or Ted. I think you would really enjoy it, man. Love the videos. You know, now might be a good time to start Hardy Bucks. I've been aware of it for a while, but now I do need a new Irish show. Could have at least picked the episode where the dude won 20k. You see, I don't understand comments like this, because it's like, oh, you should have picked the episode where the dude won 20k. But if I were to do that, I would have known beforehand that he won 20k, so you would want me to watch an entire 45 minute episode of his show to get to an ending that I already know what it is. Like, you see what I mean? I will say it again, I know Charlie Brooker is busy with Black Mirror and other projects, but I wish he would go back to doing shows like How TV Ruined Your Life. Yeah, I mean, they were fun. Uh, I, I think he probably considers them past him you know I, he did do an antiviral wipe when covid was going on i, I think it, when covid was really going on in 2020 um but i i doubt he'll ever go back to those kind of shows full stop um but i i maybe in maybe sparingly who knows maybe sparingly you should definitely react to fred's for science of course and not because i need others to share my pain uh, i mean it's gonna have to be me isn't it like, I, I've, I don't think anyone's ever done a full reaction to that. There's been reviews, you can find some reviews on YouTube, but I can't, I couldn't find anyone who's ever done a full reaction video to that, and, uh, it's gonna have to be me, isn't it? Well, yeah, I guess it is. This is great as you have been watching, which you should do more of. Uh, there will be more. 
maybe sooner than you think. Have you ever watched Are You Being Served at all? I have not. Really old show, right? Like 70s? Um, I, I have not. I'm a, I've heard of it, obviously. Uh, but to this point, I have not seen it. No, could be something. could be something to do there. As soon as the Spiker Grove episode started, everyone of a certain age knew which episode it was. Uh, this was big news when I was a teenager, as they really went all out with the PJ Blindness storyline. This is basically uh, why Ant and Deck got famous. Uh, they had a music career as their PJ and Duncan persona personas, and it went on to have a hugely successful presenting career. Oh, I'm familiar with their music career. I've seen Let's Get Ready to Rumble, unfortunately. Despite their impact on British TV, uh, five to six years of you reacting to it, I think this might be the first Ant and Deck thing you've seen. I saw um, I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here a long time ago, but aside from that, yeah, that might be it. One thing that leapt at me in the opening tiles of Biker Grove was written by Matthew Graham, uh, some of whose later work you're already familiar with. He went on to write uh, and create Life on Mars and Ashes to Ashes. Really? Damn, well, he's definitely good at drama. You know, after this Biker Grove episode, I wonder if people were scared to go paintballing. I mean, I think it served as a good PSA. Keep your fucking goggles on. In the 90s, kids in the UK just wore random American sports team. I had 49ers hat, Atlanta Braves, Bengals, My Ducks hockey shirt, Boston White Sox, which <laughs> Boston Red Sox, you were close, White Sox of Chicago, uh, Orlando Magic t-shirt, loads of random shit. That's funny, because kids in the US did that in the 90s too. <laughs> At the time, Les Dennis was pretty much like that all the time. Previous to hosting Family Fortunes, he was an impressionist and was part of the team that was on Russ Abbott's Funhouse. Oh, okay. So he was probably probably just carrying over his persona a little bit. Fair enough. I'd like to hear more of his impressions. One of the most frustrating things about Family Fortunes is the most obvious answer you think of either takes ages for contestants to come up with, uh, or they don't say it at all, like, as you said, four-leaf closer. It is interesting. It is frustrating, but it was also interesting to see how different people's minds work, because, like, Whenever someone said, if you were to say, name something lucky to me, Four Leaf Clover immediately pops in my mind, like without fail, every time, but clearly not everyone. The oldest thing you've watched, probably the first Doctor Who serial in November 1963. That or the first episode of Steptoe and Son. I think that might have been earlier to be honest. Uh, if you're up for uh, other old programs, I can strongly recommend Callan, a four-series TV spy drama of Edward Woodward starting in 1967. It's a very different feel from this, uh, from the Avengers, that is. Uh, much darker and more grounded. Callan hates his job and the horrible things it requires him to do, but has the threat of prison hanging over him if he doesn't cooperate. Ah, oh, okay. And he's released uh, from jail in return for working as a spy. It's also strongly implied that he would be considered a security risk and fellow agents will be sent to kill him. Okay, so it keep, keeps you on edge a little bit by keeping the character on edge. All surviving episodes appear to be on YouTube. Perfect. People did indeed lose their mind over this Brass Eye episode. The classic one was the Daily Star, which was on the opposite page to the article calling Brass Eye a sick show, was an article about a 15-year-old singer, Charlotte Church. Uh, the headline was, She's a big girl now, and includes the line, She turned up at a Hollywood bash looking chess swell. <coughs> <coughs> Our tabloids have a long history of moral indignation, while at the same time uh, perving on underage celebrities. Yeah, I mean, more than likely, they probably less they fucking lost their mind because they got called on their own fucking garbage. I think someone uploaded a section of the Channel 4 Right to Reply, but as a reaction to this brass eye episode, Right to Reply was a C4 show that let uh, viewers air their complaints about the show. A lot of people linked me reactions on YouTube, uh, like reactions from the brass eye episode time, so thank you for that. I might compile them together and make a big thing about it. I always thought the rapper in the brass eye episode was meant to be Eminem. Kind of sounded like him, but just the clothes and shit, he looked exactly like Fred Durst. The majority of the cast had just opened Peter Pan Goes Wrong on Broadway, wondering how the panto element uh, will work with an American audience. Maybe there'll be an intro from Chris explaining, uh, it's not a panto, so don't shout out and say stock phrases that every British person already knows. You see, that's interesting, because I feel like that wouldn't work, because American theater audiences, like, are usually pretty polite. So, like, I feel like if if he were to say, don't shout out, um, they might actually not do it. <laughs> you know, the opening theme tune, The Gladiators is a banger when Noah lets it play it twice in double uh, episode upload. I wasn't going to originally, but it's just, it's so good. Nothing wrong with Cromer, been there uh, loads of times, lovely place. I bet that rich family took their credit cards with them. Mmm, talking about rich holiday, poor holiday. That's a good point. I mean... They wouldn't have called him out on camera, but yeah, you you could be right there. I, I didn't think about the credit cards. That was hate for Liam killed me in the second Ben Dorm episode reaction. I mean, he's just like it, it. It really that episode it took a turn from 
you know, he's just brain dead to he's incredibly creepy. Jake Canuso, who was Mateo, already knew ben Bananarama uh, from his days as one of their backup dancers, so I presume he asked him if he wanted to do a little cameo role. He was a backup dancer for Bananarama? That's awesome. Is there footage of that? Yeah, the storyline of Donald becomes uh, quite awkward when, after his actor uh, died of cancer a few years later. Yeah, that's... Damn, rest in peace, Kenny. There should only be one episode left, so I'm not sure which one you have is, maybe the first episode of Series 5. So I mentioned in the Benidorm two-parter that I had two more episodes of Series 4, but there was only one more episode of Series 4, which I ended up doing right after. And upon, I'm like, okay, then, but I had an episode in the folder that said Series 4, Episode 7, even though there isn't a Series 4, Episode 7. So I'm like, what the fuck is this? So I clicked on it, and for whatever reason, it was just another copy of the Christmas special, which is super weird, because this Christmas special came before Series 4, so... I don't know. A good series finale to Ben Dorm. Uh, the last couple episodes were the best in series, in my opinion. Yeah, they really, like, locked it down at the end. It was like, it was a transition series, and you could tell the first few episodes they were trying to find their footing with the new characters and all that, but, I mean, everybody had a good moment. Even the shitty characters had a good moment in that finale, so, I mean, they, they really locked it down. Apparently, the last episode of Series 4 was originally written as the final episode of Benidorm. Uh, there was an end of the road for... This was the end of the road for the characters. The writer announced that he quit just before it aired, but ITV wanted more, so he reluctantly was enticed back with help writing from Steve Pimpleton and Neil Fitzmorris, who was Lucky Kev in Season 5. Okay. Okay, Andrew. I mean, yeah. Yeah, uh, you could have conceivably ended it there with the tribute to Mel and all that. That, that makes... That makes a lot of sense, honestly. I could see it. A speech from Liam was, wow, so powerful. I sense your opinion of him might be changing a little. Not yet. He's got a lot to go. I mean, one good character moment doesn't really make up for a dozen shitty character moments. So, I mean, that was a good character moment, but not, not yet. No. Imagine having your insurance uh, fraud scam foiled by the leader of the Groovy Gang. That's where I've seen that guy from. He kind of looks like Noel Edmonds, but also I'm like, it's not just that. He's, he's probably from something else. He's in a Groovy Gang episode of Only Fools. It has been a while since I've seen that, but that makes sense. The Nun on Crutches, that's Sister George Michael to you, uh, was written because the actress uh, was who played her uh, really injured her leg. She also hosts the Great Pottery Throwdown and missed the first few episodes of the new series and turned up on crutches. The Great Pottery Throwdown sounds like something I would do a reaction to, nobody would watch it, but I would probably enjoy it. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Worth pointing out that Claire is in this series, Dear Girls Less, because the recording was delayed to COVID, and the 35-year-old uh, Nicola, was well, she's 35? Damn. Uh, was double booked with Burr, wait, Bridgerton? Bridgerton. Uh, so they had to film around her the best they could. Okay, well, I mean, I, I, I think all things considered, I didn't really notice that much. The Inbetweeners was a silly comparison to Dairy Girls, but I find them equally good in their own way. Uh, the show, some girls tried to be a female version of the Inbetweeners. Hmm, okay. But yeah, I, again, I, I feel like people probably use the Inbetweeners comparison probably to more lure me into the show by using something I'm familiar with. I'm going to choose to believe that because they're such different shows. Like... It's it's a it's a bad comparison. They're such different shows, but I've, I'm I, I have a feeling people were just trying to use that to lure me in because there is some similarities. And in fairness, it worked. A couple of guest stars in this Doctor Who series that slipped by you on this occasion. The bad guy in Planet Ud was Tim McGearney, uh, who was Percy Darling's play. Oh, really? Wow, okay, I did not recognize him. To be fair, he was really young when he was Percy. Uh, and the Sondra in the general was Christopher Ryan, Mike for the Young Ones, and Driscoll Brother. Although you never guess by looking at his potato head, it's all in the voice. Okay, yeah, now that you say that, thinking of the voice, yeah, I, I do make that connection now, but not at the time. Oh uh, yes, yeah, Doctor's Daughter. The episode where the Doctor's Daughter Jenny is played by the Doctor's Daughter uh, G uh, Georgia Moffat, daughter of Peter Davison. Georgia would then grow up uh, going to the show with the Doctor's Daughter Lucy Baker, daughter of Colin Baker. Uh, shortly after this episode, Georgia would later hook up with Tennant in real life and get married and give birth to the Doctor's Daughter, Olive Tennant, and a Doctor's Daughter Doris Tennant, and a Doctor's Daughter Bertie Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> and let's not get started how House of the Dragon pushes a family tree into further obscurity. Good look. So, so her and Teddy got married? Wow, okay. That's... Jesus, that's a lot of weird-ass lore right there. <laughs> I think it's great how Taff is now allowed to watch Doctor Who. I always thought that was a harsh rule. Man, that's an old meme. For those of you who don't know, when I first started watching Doctor Who, I did it very sparingly, and I got a very upset comment from somebody on YouTube who said, it was fucking hilarious, said, please stop reacting, Doctor Who. You don't deserve to watch it. And I'm like, bro, you are tr 
a mad hick. <laughs> The universe that Russell T. Davies created over four years of Doctor Who was so impressive. Uh, it's not just that there's a consistency between the three main shows so that this, when this is aired, you knew that who was alive in Torchwood uh, and who was alive in Sarah Jane Adventures, but all the extra stuff that you just understand. Uh, the Judon, Harriet Jones, side characters, family members, the history uh, of each family, uh, of each of the former comparisons of the Daleks. It comes together so well. So many cross-over shows, especially since Marvel, are just, hey, let's uh, put these characters together and have fun while still on Earth and Journey's End. Uh, you could really see uh, that a care has gone in the characters' universe. I, to be fair, I think early Marvel was um, put a lot of care. I, I feel like, I think, I feel like Marvel kind of peaked with um, Endgame and and all that, and after that, you know, whole story. Um, they now they're kind of there, like, hey, let's just put them here and have fun, you know. I think they're there now, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this was very carefully crafted, and it was a very satisfying crossover. I don't know if I'm correct on this, but you seem to think Dalek Khan is the same Dalek from Series 1. He is not, but Dalek is dead. I figured that, but I also, like, people come back to life all the time, so who the fuck knows. Uh, but I, to be fair, I also did think he was Dalek Khan, or he was the guy from Series 1, so fair enough. Dalek Khan is the last member of the Cold Scarrow who's seen first in Series 2, Army of Ghosts, and Doomsday, and last seen Series 3, Dogs, Manhattan, and Fogos, Dogs. I have definitely have members he escaped using the- Oh, okay. Gotcha. I remember now. Okay. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for a supersized episode of Reading Your Comments. The comments in the video were pulled from a lot. You ready? Uh, reading Comments 213, Tenable, I'm Alan Partridge 3, Tipping Point, How TV Ruin Your Life 1 and 2, Biker Groves, Family Fortune, The Avengers, The Brass Eye Rewatch, The Goes Wrong Show, Gladiators Series 2, 7 and 8, Rich Holiday, Poor Holiday, Benidorm 26, 27, and 28, The Complete Third Series of Dairy Girls, and The Complete Fourth Series of doctor who if you want a chance to get your comment read in next week's episode of reading your comments the videos to comment on are as follows uh this video uh direction video that also came out will come out later today which is top of the pops three direction video that comes out tomorrow uh, which is, what was it again? Oh yeah, Good Night Sweetheart, uh, the complete second series, and then the videos that come out Wednesday, Thursday, and then Line of Duty Series 4 on Friday, and Reading Your Comments should be, Series 3, I'm sorry, and Reading Comments should be back, uh, on Sunday next week, but that is it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, my Twitch, my streamers, and Lay, my second channel, Free Skinny Views, my Twitter. If you want to follow me on my Patreon, if you want to support me on my daily motion, all things are in the video description down below, as well as the Twitch VODs, the Twitch VODs channel and the community Reddit. Uh, thank you to all my patrons also who are named in the video description. If you didn't know, you could be patron me for as little as $1 dollar one pound. You get extra direction videos, as well as the reading comes up to a day early, sometimes more. Uh, with all that being said, though, my name is Taffer's Team. This has been my episode 214 of Reading Your Comments. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.